Hi everyone, I'm Marianne, the Artsy Crafter. Welcome to my channel. Are you one of the viewers that have been wanting to make your first journal and perhaps you've been watching you know, a lot of YouTube uh, tutorials on doing just that, but still, after all this time, you haven't made your first journal? Then what are you waiting for, hey? <laughs> if you have no supplies and are short on time, then this tutorial is made for you. Today I'm giving you no more chances to come up with any more excuses to not make your first journal. I'm going to show you how to make a journal with all the supplies you'll need you can find around your house. Uh, you don't have to go out and do to the shops or anything like that or you know um, buy anything online. Just what you've got you found you can find around your house. So and you know um, how I know that because I just went and I scavenged scavenger hunted through my house uh, and within a short space of time I managed to find enough stuff to make a cute little journal. So that's what I want you to do right now but before you go I better show you um, this this is the little prototype of what I found in my um, house all the little papers and bits and pieces you know ribbons and fabrics and all that kind of thing that I had on hand and I just whipped this little um, journal together to show you that it's possible. And this is just some of the ideas that uh, yeah, um, I will, after I show you through this, what we've, uh, what I've created, these are just elements that haven't been put in as yet. But you can see, um, you know, there's nothing strange or anything. This is just some, um, some packaging, um, some old copy paper, um, you know those kids um, uh, sketchbooks and old diaries and journals and whatnot um, that you haven't used some paper doilies an envelope um, this is a receipt from a store some parchment or baking paper that you use in the kitchen and um, this is from a children's book so if you've got old children's books or your grandkids books that they're not wanting anymore you can go read those and um, some ruled exercise books uh, copy paper and also tissue so anyway so i will show now show you um, my the collection of supplies first um that i got around the house just to give you some idea of what you might look for uh, you won't have everything i have but you will perhaps have something other things um, you can use i'm sure so we'll go ahead and uh, I'll show you that now. So this is what I found uh, in my house when I went searching. I went through, uh, anyway, I'll show you <laughs> as I go along. I've got some of these paper doilies. Uh, they're always handy to use in journals. Um, some junk. Uh, this is actually off an egg carton. So uh, yeah, it's you know nice and sturdy materials. So book pages, uh, labels and tags of uh, some recent purchases of clothing there, and uh, some napkins. Or you, if you've got paper towel napkins, paper towel, you can use these. These are uh, things I got out of my filing cabinet. Uh, we had a had a sports car. A couple of years ago and I miss it but uh, it slowly died because it's fairly old so this is the old insurance um, papers that I had for it that are sitting there and I haven't thrown them out and this is these things that you get uh, when you get insurance policy the disclosure product disclosure statement and all those kinds of things uh, you, you know you might get this as uh, these kinds of things as uh, even junk mail papers and whatnot so I'm going to use those and the ones with those on the one side this one's got two sides so I have to go grab another one uh, ones with nothing on the back uh, even better so I've got that this is just my regular copy paper that I used in a printer uh, nothing special there you can get different types of paper you'll have lying around the house uh, it doesn't have to be that as, as again some ruled pages from an old exercise book that I had lying around so I haven't used up this is actually some um, craft paper that you get out of one of those kids craft books you know they can draw and paint and all that kind of thing those thin ones that you get 
they use them in the schools. Uh, this is actually some, um, just some, what do you call it, cardboard, cardstock type thing that you get in a big sheet. That, and then all kinds of packaging, um, paper bags, uh, lunch bags, uh, grocery bags, uh, so I've got that. And then the other things I had, I've been using before. But if you've got some old books, or this one here is actually a... A diary that I've never used. This is just a little book that I got from these two I got from a charity shop. This one's another diary that I thought was really sweet. This is another one I pulled apart. So if you got kids or grandkids or whatnot that hey, they're grown up and you still got their old books, uh, children's books, storybooks, um, they're a great source of um, supplies. So you got some pretty images in there to use. So that's all the papers and then in my stash oh this one here is out of a magazine um, it was a pretty um, image of a rose and then i had some scraps of fabric uh, in my stash uh, i've also um, cut up some old bed sheets and pillowcases tea towels old um, linen tea towels all those kinds of things and excuse my inky fingers <laughs> been doing a lot of inking. Uh, the other thing I had was masking tape. Uh, so um, safety pins, they're good for using to um, clip on um, some tabs and whatnot. Other things I got was some triangular bandage and I've got one here somewhere. This is one I've used um, and I've just left it there because so, uh, it's being washed but it's grubby and uh, I'm going to use it for, it's nice and thin, it's a bit like cheesecloth, so they're great for using in journals, you can ink them up and you can coffee dye them and all kinds of things, so that's what I had. This here was some um, universal dressing, large, and it had um, some cotton wool attached to it, I've never used these before, and these have been sitting there for years, so I just pulled the cotton wool off it, and you got some nice cheesecloth type fabric there to use in journals. I'm um, sure of that if you don't have that. I'm sure you got some of these cotton uh, bandages <laughs> in your first aid kit. So if you go and use these as elements in your journal, uh, make sure you remember to go and replace them in your first aid kit because uh, heaven forbid that someone in your family has an accident and you don't have the bandages there to fix them up. So that's those. Quickly, uh, that's just some of what I had. As I said, I didn't I only spend a few minutes rubbaging around for all those things, getting together. The other thing I've got is some stash of uh, ribbons and ribbons and string and elastic. Uh, I've got all those things uh, to bind your uh, pages in. As I said, it's going to be no sew, so they're going to be using one of these products here as the binding. And then I've also had some unusual things like uh, you can use a knife and you know these supplies, some of uh, this glue stick and also some salt. So let's have fun and see what we can do with all that. So you go ahead and get some supplies together or wait and see how mine turns out <laughs> and then uh, you can rewind the video and then start. Okay, we'll get on to the next step. So we're going to do some dyeing of some papers uh, just so that you don't start off with blank, white blank pages in your journals. It'll give you something to work with. I'll show you. This is a store docket. You see on the back, this is from the chemist. There are the dockets. So do one of those. Uh, I'll show you how this is just napkin paper. Uh, as I said, you can use one ply um, paper towel to do this technique. It just gives you some texture on your pages and I'll show you how to do the stamping and all that kind of thing. You don't need stamps at all. You don't have to do this step. This is just um, something you can do, create very quickly. Uh, in a very short amount of time and have them all ready to go to use in your journal. So that's that step. We'll, and now we'll get these pages ready. And if you don't want to do it, you can just fast forward through this part. 
and get on with um, putting all the papers together. Now before we start this step you want to get a um, some plastic. I'm just using a bin liner to cover my table or my desk. Uh, you might want to use uh, if you've got a dining table or a bench top or kitchen island bench or something rather to spread this out a bit more to do all your pages at once um, but I don't have the room <laughs> uh, to do that on camera so this is what I'm going to do so I will do um, just a couple of pages to show you uh, what we're going to do here so I've just got uh, some of the pages here's one's the book page uh, copy paper and a ruled paper all you have to do is use some either coffee dye tea dye um, sometimes you, if you got in your cupboard some Prisian essence soy sauce all those kinds of things you can add some water to it put it in a spray bottle and I'll give you that vintage look or maybe some uh, acrylic paint you can do the same thing, water it down and put it in a spray bottle and use that. Uh, if you've got one of those cleaning agents in a spray, spray bottle, that an empty one, you know, clean that out well of all the chemicals inside and then you could add that into the spray bottle and use that as a spray bottle. As I said, you know, I'm looking at household items here for you to use and so I'll put that aside and I'll just use this because uh, I've already got it on hand and it's just a matter of uh, shake up a little bit and spray onto the pages this is a very simple way of dyeing your papers to make them a little bit vintage you could use uh, even food coloring if you didn't want to have it a vintage color you can make other colors as well uh, you know and doing this uh, so that you can start off with a few pages i mean you have to do this before you put the pages together into a journal you won't be able to do it after you <laughs> after they're in the journal a little bit uh, more difficult and so that's all I'm going to do it takes a few seconds to spray so here you get all your pages spread out you can spray as many as you want at once and then uh, in with every craft it's always the drying time that takes the longest and with these the benefit of these ones uh, these particular pages not particularly this one is that the dye issue will come through on the other side given time uh, the other thing you can do is to use your hairdryer I'm sure most people will have a hairdryer or some heating tool that they can dry these pages so for now I'm just going to I usually uh, if I'm spraying I'll usually use these plastic sleeves and just put them on there and then set them aside to either dry in the sun if you have some sun around or uh, in front of a heater or whatever just don't get them too close uh, so you just want to get let them all dry first and then uh, they're done all at once <laughs> very quick and simple and then I'll just move all these aside and I'll show you the next ones we've got a couple more and then we'll be finished for this stage this is the um, tracing paper that I'm using uh, it's a little bit more resistant and it's going to roll off on me because it's got wet it's a little bit more resistant to uh, taking dyes and paints and whatnot but you just have to uh, persuade it <laughs> by spraying it on and then I'll spray it on so far and then I will usually get my hairdryer out and start drying it and as it dries you'll see where it's taken onto the page uh, and then you know as I go on I will spray more where I want more of it on the page so that's and the beauty of that is like you'll see with this dry one is it does both sides at once so you don't have to spray both sides so I'll leave that one aside as well uh, you, as I said this these steps are optional just gives you some pages to start with uh, you know as I said before that uh, decorated a little bit or colored up is a store docket and with this one if you got something um, abrasive like some uh, you know those 
that steel wool that you use to scrub uh, saucepans with or um, perhaps a little bit of uh, sandpaper. Um, I don't have any steel wool on me at this stage so I'll just use this little it's very fine sandpaper. All I'm going to do is scratch the surface here because these dockets the ink's very cheap and uh, the paper's very cheap so I don't want to scratch too uh, too severely or too far into there. I just want to break up some of that surface a little bit and then I'm going to get uh, some water on a paintbrush and just move some of that ink around on the page just to give it a color. Uh, uh, you can also use some ink instead uh, you know if you've got inks or uh, watercolors or colored pencils or whatnot it's just starting off to make this uh, docket turn it into something vintage looking if that's what you're uh, wanting if you don't want a vintage look then don't use the docket or perhaps you want to put something else on top so this is the process that I'm going to use or I'm using and I just spray that onto there and I'll just dry that off and come back and show you yeah it's mostly dry I just dab off some spots there and then we're going to turn this over and once again uh, spray some coffee dye on the back here it's going to curl up on me this time <laughs> uh, why are you doing that you didn't do it before So I've got some, going to use some, just some regular uh, table salt here and I'm going to sprinkle some on across there. Uh, you don't want to do too much, you try and spread it out. And then you can leave that to dry or like I'm going to do to speed all this up. I'm going to use my trusty hairdryer once again and dry it off. Okay, now I just have to Scrape off all the salt and show you the design that it leaves behind. The salt, of course, absorbs all the moisture on the page and leaves you this beautiful pattern behind. There you go. You can see all the little spots, and that was the other side. So that's that one. So we just have one more to do oh. and the next one is I'm going to do uh, with your household receipts or accounts or whatever. Um, oops, we've got two pages. Well, I'm going to do use two different colours and I'll show you how I do that too. And of course we need uh, the, um, if you've got this is a napkin and of course you can use paper towel as long as it's one ply you can if it's two ply you have to pull the pliers apart and use one so I'll show you how to do the one because uh, all it is is the same technique just using different colors so I will do um, this one because most of you you know will probably have uh, brown and black ink or acrylics or you know whatever um, more so than the red so this is just red ink and so I'll put that aside and we'll get on with it. Oh, which one will I use? I'll use the one with the more writing on it so you get an idea of what it will look like when it's finished. And you shouldn't see most of this when it's finished. And of course, once again, I'm doing my trusty <laughs> uh, coffee dye. Okay, that page is dry. I often uh, start drying on one side and when it's uh, you know about three quarters or two thirds of the way dry, I'll often turn it over and dry from the back. Uh, it's I find it uh, tends to speed the drying process up a bit. Uh, not much, but a little bit. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, attach this napkin to the page to add some texture to your page and to cover up all that writing and whatnot so uh, the way to do that is to either use some you could use some PVA glue 
and a paintbrush and paint it on or to uh, speed up the process if you have a glue stick you can use a glue stick it's probably even uh, oops <laughs> I think I need a new glue stick by the looks popped out okay we just slide that across so it covers the whole page and don't worry about any creases but be very gentle pressing it down so that you don't tear the napkin so with the glue stick is uh, a little bit gentler on the napkin than the PVA glue and of course I'm not going to wait till this uh, dries the glue because um, it's pretty much a dry glue anyway but I'm going to get my trusty dye out again and completely spray the whole lot even the napkin over there and you get a two for one deal in this process not only do you get a textured uh, vintage page with the napkin on top, you get rid of the uh, paperwork <laughs> out of your filing system. And well, it's actually, that's a three in one deal, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be? And then you get some uh, napkin that's coffee dyed as well that you can use uh, when you're working on your pages. So la for the last time, hopefully, I'll use my hairdryer to dry this off. Now dry doesn't usually take as long to dry this one than the others and just a matter of peeling it off the plastic carefully. Okay and then we can go around and trim around the edges um, and then you can keep this bit here. There's a little bit of dampness there but that doesn't matter. Keep this bit here and also use your scissors, don't use any other craft knife because otherwise it will tear the paper. So I'll cut around this and I'll come back and show you how we finish this off. Okay, that's all finished. And uh, once again, if I haven't said it before or if I haven't emphasized it enough, uh, this step of using coffee dye uh, and preparing these pages is optional. It's up to you whether you want to do this step or not. If not, you can just skip forward and uh, get on to where we uh, start putting the pages together and making the cover and finishing off the journal. I'll just snip that bit off there. So from here I will show you the example again and I'm trying to get a one that you know is going to stamp on here. I don't know which one's got more ink on it. So if you've got a sponge of any kind I'm just going to use this straight out, this ink pad this is just um, adding decoration to this textured page. You can leave it exactly uh, blank. There we go. You can see more of that. And if you don't have these uh, inks or ink daubers or whatever, I use a makeup sponge. They come in all different sizes and shapes. Um, I'll use this one because it's already black and you just pounce on there and this also helps to make uh, some decorative elements on your page and that's all we're going to do that so the other one um, I've done is exactly the same except that I used a aged mahogany ink color on there so there we go we're all ready to go to put our journal together so now we'll go and put all the pages together and make the cover and then uh, assemble it all so okay I've laid out all my papers that I'm going to be using and I've collected I think I've got 12 these two I'm going to reserve for the cover and so now it's a matter of uh, cutting all your pages down to size and we're going to be making a journal that's going to be seven inches high by five inches wide and in metric that's when I say five inches wide which is about 12 and a half centimeters by seven high you could say about 18 centimeters high uh, that will make it easier for you to cut the pages down especially when you're using A4 and to construct the cover um, we'll be able to do that in one sheet of A4 or copy paper 
um, if you're in the northern hemisphere and you don't have A4 sizing. So all we have to do, and I'll start with these pages. Um, I decided on this one because I like this image, but we have to decide when you're choosing these, if it's going to be five inches, five inches gets to there. So I'm not going to be cutting that off. I don't want to do <laughs> do that. I'm, so the way to get around that is you measure five inches and then fold it in. So if your pages papers are a bit big, you don't have to cut them down to size all the time. So this page will have and I won't lose that image. So it'll be just a little flip out and I won't lose that image. And then I have to do that on the other side. So it's just a matter of folding that over. And this is where uh, if you have a, a uh, butter knife, you can use the back of that as a bone folder. And there we go. So we're going to do that to all the pages. I've cut out all my papers they're so cute five by seven and the one thing that i forgot uh one item i forgot to include in my uh, haul when i went and grabbed all the stuff around the house all my supplies is envelope now uh, the reason why i didn't have this find this in the house is because they're all uh, in my box in my in my cupboard here <laughs> down my craft room <laughs> i've been hoarding them down here so, but it's very important because I have a ton of these and I'm sure that uh, you get a ton of these every year. So uh, don't worry about, um, you know, if they're broken, the tops or whatnot, I usually use a knife to cut it open. And we've got these little flappy things. And to address that issue, you just get some glue and glue those little flappy things down. Then you can use these envelope in the journal uh, they make great pockets and you don't have to use this little window if you don't want to um, you can just uh, you know when you're working in the journal you can just cover that up with some paper and decorate it up and uh, that window will disappear or you can put something in there and uh, make it a feature so oh and i use the docket as well as a short page because not all your pages have to be uh, the same size so we're just going to sort them out into piles and I cut this one one way and this one the other way just for, for some variation. So you don't want all your pages to be stacked the same way. You want to break them up, vary them up so they're not all um, uniform. So it's and it's personal preference as I said once again you can just pick you know, a plain page, maybe um, a ruled page, and then, you know, one of these little book pages, and maybe some vellum. They will look nice to open up against there. And perhaps these short pages in here. And maybe you want some of this paper here, and then the plain paper. I mean, I might move all these around again, who knows. And that there. Another uh, page there. And then this one. Uh, this one I cut down and I didn't want to cut the bottom off, so I turned it up. And this can be a pocket. A pocket on both pages. You just have to glue the edges in here. Uh, you can wait. You don't have to do that straight away. And then. Um, one of the important things is to work out what uh, one you want in the center. So I thought I'd have this in the center and open up like that. And that will be my center page. So I can put this in there. And that so go ahead and get them all sorted out into, uh, this is what you call a signature, a bundle of papers put together and they'll be bound into a journal together as a group and you know you get several you can have several 
signatures in a journal but today we're going to uh, just have the one signature just to make this a quick and easy process and you can see there's a variety there all the pages are all different just as you're working in them you can decorate them as you go so for now uh, we'll leave that aside and next job is to get on make this cover and uh, then it's finished these are the um, papers that we're going to use to make the cover this is just uh, one of um, it's like an art pad except it's brown paper so, so um, that's what I'm going to use for the cover the brown paper bag or maybe a cover off an ex old exercise book or whatever you got on hand um, so and then these two that we um, if you were following along with me we made these out of the tissue paper and stamped them up so I'm going to put this one on the outside as the outside cover and this on the inside has the inside cover so they'll be sandwiched together um, before we do that we need to cut this down to size and we go back to our journal first and the journal um, remember is five inches wide by seven inches high and you'll see when you put the pages together you'll see they the bulk of the spine pushes those pages out and you get this that the um, on the edge there they all push out so they're not um, all even so they become a little bit wider in that case so if you don't like that look you rather you can see it from the top here uh, if you want to even that up the best way to, the easiest way to do that is to go through and make sure you don't have any pages in there where you've got flaps on the side and this one's upside down um yes yeah, so you want because if you're going to cut it off you're going to cut those flaps off so you want to remove anything with side flaps first before you do this and then you make sure all the pages are, are in there pushed against the spine firmly against the spine and then um, you can get a, a clip to clip these in place but I'm just going to uh, press it down and you'll need a metal ruler and you place the metal ruler along the edge of the top page like that you line it up right on that top edge and you get a craft knife and you just firmly hold press that ruler down and then slowly start cutting through those layers uh, if you don't have to do this this is just if you showing you if you want to make a straight edge here where all the pages line up I'm just showing you an option that you can use you can do uh, and that's what you prefer and you can see they're all lined up all perfectly straight then the ones with the um, put this one back in the center I had that around the wrong way yes that's the way it's supposed to go this here in the center and you can see it sticks out so we'll have to um, just measure that and make sure we'll have to refold and make sure those folds are inside there you go and now all of your pages are lined up all the way around it's all even and now um, so that's as I said it's five by seven and now we're going to make cut the um, which is what 12 and a half by about 17 and or 18 to make it easier so we're going to make the cover five and a quarter um, or if you want a little bit more room if you're going to if you intend to add more uh, signatures into your cover and I'll show you how you can do that um, we're just going to make one signature 
um, in this journal today. Um, because I'm only making the one signature, I'm just going to make it five and a quarter. So I'm going to make the cover a quarter inch, um, which is say half a centimeter more. Um, so this fits right inside uh, for the height. Uh, this is seven inches high, so I'm going to make it seven and a quarter inches high. I'm going to fold my page, my cover base over first and uh, use a, a ruler or a pencil or if you've got a, um, the bone folder, you can use that, fold it down and then we can measure our cover. So as I said, I'm going to do five and a quarter. And there we go, that's the size of our cover. So these pages, these papers here, uh, we can fold these in half as well because it just makes it easier to cut them down. I'll just show you. An easier option would be um, to place this on this panel line all the edges up like that and then draw there's that one and then there's this one Okay, now we can attach these papers. So I'll glue the that one on the outside and the uh, black and brown on the inside. So I'll go ahead and do that. And I usually open it up and hold this down and then I usually glue one half first, fold that down and then the other half just makes it easier so you're not having to glue the whole sheet all at once and risk having your glue drying out before you get it all down. There you go, we've got our outside and our inside cover. Now we want to fold it over and to reinforce that spine again, re-establish that spine I should say. And this is where your papers really should wait till they're dry because they can bubble up towards the spine. Um, you just gently run your fingers on the outside of that ruler. Along there just to gently press it over. So you get so far and then you can take that out and make sure the front and back panels line up again like that and as I said the glue will probably be still wet so be careful don't smudge at this stage just press it down gently and there's your journal color so that could be finished you, you don't have to do anything else to it we you can just skip through to the path where we um, attach the pages of your journal into the cover um, but for now I'm going to show you I'm going to um, decorate the outside first a little bit and I'm going to use this book that I showed you before this little uh, angel gardening book I've taken some images out of here and and uh, this one isn't one, this is one I got out of a magazine and uh, I just tore around the edges. I wanted to see if it would fit on the front cover. So I'm going to use it on the front cover cover as a decoration. Um, but it's, it's sort of, um, I wanted to pop more off the page. So I'm going to put some book page behind there and I'm going to tear around the edges um, to create like a frame and a little, make it pop off the page a bit and I'll just uh, for the back I'll show you I cut this panel out of the book and it has a cute little quote on the back here so I'm going to put that on my back cover 
there and uh, so I will go ahead and do that and then I'll come back and show you how it worked out. I just wanted to pop back in and show you um, I cut this out by tracing um, a line around it. Um, it's a little bit big for the cover but uh, it's what I got to work with and I really love the image of those roses and the colors and I thought um, it looked a bit plain uh, without something in this little corner here so I just popped in this uh, I had this mini doily and I thought I'd use I had um, wasn't in my stash when I first showed you but uh, I had a bigger one but uh, it just saves me time cutting it out and uh, I can get on with putting this cover down so that's what I had and I thought this was um, out of the the little angel garden book um, it had some of these sayings on the back on some of these pages and of course I won't be able to find one now I like to show you that uh, you can just go through and you know find out little elements on these little books um, if you have a book there's another one there it's a little bit big that one so this one was suitable so I thought I'd pop that on the corner here and that uh, completes my scene it uh, matches the background because it comes out of the same book so um no it doesn't this is a, a magazine isn't it so but it matched i think it matched perfectly so i'll glue that and uh, we'll get back i'll come back and we can um bound bind the um, pages into this cover so it won't be long there's our cover finished and this is what my cover looks like uh, so i hope you um opted to decorate your cover and that's what the back <laughs> funny thing that happened um you know when you're in a hurry trying to do something you always make a mistake and i started gluing this side first because it did have another image on the back and uh, so i had to wipe all the glue off so it's a little bit wet still you can see the edges are a little bit wonky um but never mind so that's all finished so it's only a case of uh Binding this into your cover. So we just open this up, and the one other thing that I uh, thought would be a nice idea just to give this um, a little extra decoration and make it a little extra special. So we could do that now. Glue that down, and it's very hard to see where. Um, the front and the back covers are so you can fold it over and then you've got a little bit of wiggle room to uh, so to get this even as much as you want um, before the glue dries I've used fabric glue so there we go that looks pretty good so now I will turn it over So now I'll just leave that aside for till we um, sort out how you're going to bind your pages into your journal. And I'm going to use the sari silk because I've got a ton of that and I want to get <laughs> try and get through it. Um, as I mentioned before, you could use crochet, um, some twine or string. Um, I've got a thin piece of ribbon here and the elastic. And when I use the elastic, I usually bring, move all that away. I usually, with the ribbons and that, I usually um, wrap the ribbon from the inside out and tie a bow on the outside, which I will do with the sari silk. With the elastic, I usually do it the other way. Um, wrap it around the outside and then tie it in a knot on the inside. And I might leave some bits, the ends just dangling. Um, so because it's not very attractive the elastic so I usually have that on the inside um, the twine you could do the same just have it dangling down on the inside because it's not very decorative on looking on the outside um, unless you add things to it perhaps but for now that's um, the way I'm going to do it is uh, do the sari silk and tie a nice bow on the outside so we just want to get it on the inside first and if uh, 
this stuff I could have uh, ironed it first. <laughs> it might have brought, uh, yeah, made it go flat, but uh, will you work? As I said, you know, I just ran around the house and grabbed all my supplies and I didn't have time to stop to go and do some mining. So <laughs> and I don't usually iron this sari silk unless, you know, it was something special. Um, and I don't think we need it in this case. So we just make sure it's pretty firm without bending the ends and then we just tie it in a knot so we'll see how that goes yeah sort of fairly firm here that it's snappy you hear that snapping sound and then i'm going to be oh before i tie the bow on i found um Phantom stuff I found if you got some old jewelry, um, you know, like an old uh, necklace or some earrings or a brooch or whatever you never wear. I had uh, I tied it on a string and I thought this would be a cute idea to add as um, a dangle on the outside. Um, you've heard people talking about dangles, and so I just strung it through, thread it through the ribbon. And I can tie another knot here, and then I can tie my bow. And I like the bow to be long, so I'll just cut off the excess on the ed ends here. And then that can all dangle down together, and you fold it over. You can see it dangles down there. It's quite pretty. It's a little owl image that I found. So if you've got some jewelry, that's an idea um, you can do. I didn't have that in my stash, but it was something I had in my drawer here. So I'd show you as an option for you to do in your journal. And just get all this straight. And now we can put in the pages open up to the center and then just lift that up and slip it in those pages in this is why we leave a little bit of room up the top extra height at the top and the bottom so that it gives room for you to um, put those pages in and we just Adjust it a little bit so it sits there nice and neat, as you can see, top and bottom. Okay, so that's our little journal all finished. The other thing I wanted to show you was, um, or just slip through, was some little elements in here. Uh, and I said before that you could make more than one, put one more than one signature into the journal. Um, and the way to do that would be, of course, to thread more ribbon or twine or string or whatever you want to do. You have another one. You could um, thread another one like with the ribbon and uh, or the elastic or whatever, another one inside here, and then make some more pages and then slip them through exactly the same way. So you'll have two. And that's why um, I often like to add a little extra on the edge here um, to allow for more than one signature but in this one we're just doing the one and okay yeah that's it all finished it's a cute little journal here you can do decorate it any way you want and uh, you've made your first journal wow um that is an accomplishment <laughs> And I really um, hope and encourage you to do so. If you haven't made your journal, please, you know, come and do this one. Um, as I showed you, you don't have to have any special supplies or anything like that. It's uh, just all anything you have around the house put together and make your first journal. You won't regret it. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope you all have a happy crafty day. Go ahead and make this journal. You'll have heaps of fun. Um, coming out with different ideas, I'm sure, and I will see you in the next video.
Bye, everyone.